All right, everybody. I just wanted to kind of break down some of the data here for you when it comes to forecasting this cold outbreak that just keeps getting delayed and delayed. I think it was uh, supposed to come down. In fact, a few weeks ago, people said this week was going to be really cold, and it was near 70 degrees in Birmingham yesterday. So, again, a lot of things coming into play, and I'm going to start with, with the big map here, and then I'll dive into uh, what's really behind all of this. Uh, this is the GFS model, and this large area in purple, this is around the 19th or so of this month. And you can see we may wake up in the 20s, which isn't that unusual. I'm going to take this back. The thing we're focusing in on is a large, really bitter cold air mass that's up in Canada. And the, the biggest challenge for these day-to-day -day model runs is they don't quite... It's, it's long range, so any error they make is going to be exponential, meaning if they're wrong on the forecast in the next, say, two days, it's going to be way off as we try to go two weeks down the road. But one of the things we try to use more is basically what's called uh, the Arctic Oscillation Index. And I want to show that to you here. And what happens is, you can see this line up here. This is kind of the history. And I want to go back to uh, the cold weather we had in December, which wasn't terribly bad. Again, this is positive as you go up and negative as you go down. And then as you see these red squiggly lines, that's the future. And these are ensemble runs. So these are like every little line represents a model run. And you can see some are higher, some are lower. And this black line is pretty much the mean here. It says this is the general trend. And what you see here plotted is the past. So around the 1st of December, we had some cooler air, but it really wasn't that bad. The most noticeable was uh, this January period where it was really below this center line here, which is what I'm showing you here. And this past week or so, you've noticed this climb. In fact, we got into the 60s the week after all the, the ice and the snow, and that's represented in this line here as this index went positive, and then we cooled off a bit, and then it went back positive again, which is pretty much what we're in. So as we go into next week, it's showing signs that this is going to start to drop and that's going to bring us colder air. So we're likely going to see this in the form of two or three cold fronts. Now, this happens a lot. And a lot of times the national media will call this the, uh, the polar vortex and things like that. What's basically happening is we've been in an El Nino year, which sets us up for almost a yearly weather pattern. And then you get into climate. But this Arctic oscillation is more of a one or two week time frame uh, to, to show you what's going on. And this shows you the past and this, you could dive down into the data even more. I think I can do, uh, I don't want to do that because that's going to show me a whole bunch of numbers. But you can go back to all these time frames and it'll show you up here at the top. And you can see our big warming trends. Uh, January 2020 was probably fairly warm with that. The thing that I really want to stress here is we have a general idea of how much cooler it's going to get, or even colder in some cases, but we don't know anything about the snow potential. So given what we're looking at, I would say it's definitely going to get colder, but hey, it's still February. and You can see by these charts, this happens quite a bit. So there's no reason to get all bent out of shape um, with this. So again, another way to explain this, I'm going to go back. And, and what's happening here, it's basically what the Arctic Oscillation is, is it is... It's a large-scale mode of climate variability, also referred to as the Northern Hemispheric Annular Mode, and it's called AO for short. It is the climate pattern characterized by winds circulating counterclockwise around the Arctic, around 55 degrees north latitude, where the Arctic Oscillation is in positive phase. Uh, the ring of winds circulating around the North Pole basically acts to confine, that keeps the colder air up there. But when it goes into a negative phase, it's more likely to drop into the southeast. And again, we honestly have no way of knowing how much colder it's going to get. And you're again, that's why you see a lot of this stuff float around on social media. A lot of people are really just uh, trying to get likes. I'm just trying to get the forecast right. So again, there's no reason to panic. The problem is it's hard enough to forecast two or three days out as it is. So here's the latest forecast guidance here. This is going to be for uh, what we're seeing 
just in the immediate future. Of course, we've got rain coming this week, but I'm not really talking about that. This is all about trying to shut down some of these posts that are talking about weather that's three or four weeks away. In fact, somebody posted something that was all the way through March. I'm like, stop, stop posting that. It just creates more work for other meteorologists to answer these questions instead of just spending the time, spending the time forecasting. So as we get into Saturday, we're going to have a lot of rain come through here. But the cold air stays locked up to the north near Canada. The thing is, is day-to-day -day model runs are not going to be real consistent on going with, you know, again, we, you want to really not go with just one model. This is the model blend here. This takes a lot of the model data together, and it's pretty good showing you the trends, especially as we get out past a week. So what this is going to be here, this is roughly going, I'll take a, you see that cold air that kind of breaks down in? Cold air is going to try to follow this next front next week, but it's just not going to make it. Here comes more of the surge. This is just before uh, Valentine's Day. And you notice all the blue. Those are morning lows, which isn't too out of the ordinary. And then we continue on. So the really cold stuff, at least through, I'd say, the 17th of this month, it's not terribly cold. And there's no reason to panic over this. However, one thing we will watch, though, as we take a look at the GFS model, and I'm going to take it more into a regional view here, is we can get and we can get a little storm system come through. The, we're getting some of these teaser storm systems right now. And I want to take a look. This is the first look at the model data. This is going to be as we go through Saturday into Sunday. This is just a steady rain. This is Saturday afternoon. It's probably going to rain most of the weekend. Good thing we get a break here perhaps Sunday before more rain comes in. Monday, a few thunderstorms possible. This blue shaded area, that is the chance for snow, and that's well north of uh, here in Alabama. It's up into Illinois, where it should be <laughs> no surprise this time of year. Then as we go out farther, it's kind of dry and not much going on and rather boring, actually, which is good. But then we'll have to watch this surface low, but this is way too far out to even hint at a chance of snow. Typically, this far out, these areas of low pressure show up, they tease us, and then they trend north. So, again, I'm just telling you, there's nothing out there that's anything substantial that shows us it's going to snow or that we're going to get down into the single digits again. I'd say our chance for severe weather outside of this Arctic Oscillation may be higher. So that's one thing we watch is as that Arctic Oscillation goes from negative to positive and we warm up and then see another cold front coming in since it's still winter that's when we would be concerned so that concern would probably be potentially for active march severe weather if that were, were the case because that arctic oscillation is one of the things that changes the pattern a bit and then we warm up behind that as it goes positive and then we get back to normal winter which brings in strong cold fronts so it's gonna, gonna be about the timing i'm not saying we're gonna get uh, severe weather outbreak or anything like that in March, but I am saying March is sometimes it gets active. The, the the phasing of this Arctic oscillation is something we'll have to watch, especially if we get a traditional cold front behind all of this. So again, I just wanted to bring you guys all on the same page about this, uh, about a nine minute video here. I'm going to edit it a little bit for you too, but again, there's no need to panic. Enjoy the weather we have today. Boy, it's a beautiful day out there, but again, a sloppy weekend ahead. I'll be back into work uh, later today as well.